gotta get out. Gotta. Grab the world by the throat and shout. Yeah. Gotta find it, get us a shell. Gotta. Making bread out of nothing but air. Friday night, the kid in the ground. Count on your votes. Yes. Yes. Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Good afternoon. I'm your local councillor, and I wondered if we could count on your. Uh... <clears throat> I'll be happy to discuss any issues with you. We don't discuss our politics with anybody. Oh. Oh, well. Fair enough. <laughs> Good day to you, sir. I'm your local council. <laughs> Towards our granddad's. Can you imagine what he'll say? Piss off! <laughs> all right, all right. We can do without the quartet. Oh, oh. Cover your mouth, Billy. It's like having lunch with a manhole. <laughs> He's not yawning again. You're not yawning again. Look, I've made and delivered 200 sandwiches this morning. Mum makes them. All you do is stand around in a day, is wrapping everything up in cling film. And I mean, everything he parceled my wallet up twice this morning. <laughs> I'm under pressure, aren't I? I've got Julie and the baby to think about. The christening's on Saturday. The next thing you know, she'll be wanting a bike. She's eight weeks old. She's nine weeks old. Nine? Oh, well, that's different. Let's all panic about getting her a bike. <laughs> you should have thought about all this before you became a father. I didn't know I was going to become a father, did I? If you dive into an empty pool, Billy, you can expect to bang your head. <laughs> What's that got to do with it? He's speaking metaphorically. I'm not a linguist, am I? Oh, leave him alone. He's like his dad. No plans, no thought. Just stick your finger in the mangle and see how much of your arm's left. <laughs> First you say I don't plan. And then when I say the baby will need a bite one day. That's wrong too. Everything's wrong. The way my life's going, I'll need a bite before she does. I'm sorry I mentioned it now. I'm sorry I spoke. Hey, hold it. Hold it. And what we're saying, Billy, is if you have to worry, worry about immediate things like bunny rabbits and teddy bears. Not things that are ten years away. Won't need bikes in ten years' time. With all the insecticides we're eating, we'll all be up there fighting with the pigeons for a perch. <laughs> I've ordered the cake for the christening, by the way. I haven't got anything. All my redundancy money is gone. What about the money you spent yesterday with Jack? It didn't work out. What do you mean it didn't work out? I got your buyer for that picture. He was stood there waiting with the money in his hand. He didn't want it. We phoned twice yesterday about it. I'll give him a ring. It's so sweat. Look, that was a good picture, a bargain. I don't like people who let me down. That wasn't all that good. Look, I know a good picture when I see one. Yeah, but you saw it the day before yesterday. <laughs> and its value went down yesterday. I was feeling optimistic about things. I jumped into the back of the van. He put his foot through it. Oh, <laughs> God. Billy! <laughs> Do you remember the last picture you bought? I'll poison him one day. Julie put a hole through it. I told you there was no money in holy pictures. <laughs> You're a little gremlin, you are. Huddled by the table, he hearing at other people's misfortunes. Right. Well, I think that's everything. Prayers, everybody. I've applied for a job. But I don't want to talk about it yet, but if I get it, I'll put double in the pot. I know I'm a failure. Nobody's a failure in this family, Adrian. We all have our lucky days and our unlucky days. I'm very moved. <laughs> prayers. I thought we only said prayers before dinner. When we've got a lot of problems, we say a lot of prayers. I've been mucked. Oh, oh my God. Oh, it's okay, Mum. It's 
so bad. Oh, you're right, princess. Come here. My baby, my baby, sit down, love. I know. I'll call the fire brigade. <laughs> now, listen, listen, sweetheart. Just, just answer me when you're ready. There's no rush. No need to worry. Did he touch you? I'll go out there and kill him. <laughs> Did he? No. He just took me back. Oh, thank God for that. <laughs> it had me glitter eyeliner in and me contour colour compact. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, thank you, sir. I want to report a chap in the laundrette. Good morning, Mrs. Jameson. The one over the road. Stark naked he is. <laughs> Sitting there with all his privates dangling everywhere. <laughs> no shame, nothing. He came in, took all his clothes off, put them in the washer. He's been out for change twice. <laughs> it doesn't matter where you sit, you can see parts of him. <laughs> God help our eyes when he starts pushing them out of the dryer. <laughs> I've been married three times and I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> Did you get that, Harry? you better go and check. I'd like to report a mugging, please. And I'd also like to request a little police protection around our street. I know it's only a little insignificant place and that we're all out of work and that the council won't put any light bulbs in the street lamps. And then if it weren't for the fact that my dad pushed a little yellow corporation cart around, they wouldn't even get swept. But we are human beings with human thoughts and aspirations. If you go out at night, I suggest you leave your dogs behind and take a pit pony. <laughs> Can I have your name, please, sir? Disgraceful it is. Mug she was, right outside her own house and in daylight. I'm a redundant person from real estate and I have to walk that street every day looking for work. The whole of society is hanging by a thread. Hanging by a thread. Can I have your name, please, sir? I've got a baby! <laughs> if they take handbags, they might take prams. And how would you like it if some lunatic came along and threw your baby on the ground so he could go and flog a pram? <laughs> it's up to your lot to protect our lot from the other lot. Can I have a name, please? Any name? Greetings. <laughs> I said we should have come in one card, didn't I? <laughs> You'll have to forgive these, they're feeling rather over-emotional. You see, it was our sister that was mugged. She's our only girl. I expect you want all the details. My name, address, house and pocket telephone number. <laughs> and could you make case, please, as we have to be at the Social Security Lie Detecting Department in an hour? <laughs> It's just, uh, just routine-like. They'd like to know how we can afford to wear leather jackets. <laughs> I've got her a present. What's your dad got then? Daddy. You heard daddy? Never heard you use the word daddy before. Yeah, well, I've never had a baby before, have I? She's going to grow up posh, not like the rest of us. Hey, sweetie pie. Look what daddy's got. <laughs> Ooh, really? Really? What? Don't believe it. She's a baby, Billy. A nine week old baby. I know that, don't I? Then why have you bought her a big airy spider? It's a... It's fun. Fun? Can you imagine the effect it'll have on her? A bloody great tarantula hanging in her pram. <laughs> Honestly, Billy. Or I nearly forgot. Our Aveline got mugged. Mugged? Is she right? Yeah, they just snatched a bag and ran off. Oh. Thank God. It's a bad world to bring a child up in. Oh, and my mum's bought the christening cake. What christening cake? I don't want a christening cake. Oh, come on, Julie. I told you, Billy. I don't want a christening party. I don't want a gang of people eating and drinking and pulling each other to bits in my house. There's no pleasing you, is there? And what do you want? I want my daughter to receive her name quietly and with dignity. And then I want to go home. In our car. She's my daughter too, you know. Or did you do it all by yourself? <laughs> Only the important bits, Billy. Only the important bits. 
You should be glad my mum cares. Yours doesn't. What have your dad and mum done towards our baby? Your dad didn't even bother when she was born. My dad's at sea. They can't just turn the ship around, you he know. He doesn't have to bring the ship with him, does he? <laughs> and what about your mum? She just swallowed an extra pint. And she's still trying to find her way home. <laughs> Julie! Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Julie. I'm under pressure. I love you, Julie. I'll do anything for you. Then just ask your brain to break off all undiplomatic relations with your gob. <laughs> we could sort things out if we were married, Julie. You'd have to take notice of me if we were married. Here's your tea, Grandad. <laughs> Only one scone. Is that all I get? One lousy little scone? You had your lunch an hour ago. You'll have your dinner in two hours. It's not a stomach you've got, it's a galvanised bin. <laughs> You'll find me dead one day. Dead from starvation. Have a line? Yeah. Have you got your whistle? Yeah. Joey left you his pocket phone. Did you pick it up? Yeah, it's in me bag. Now, if anyone looks at you, let Monkey off the lead, blow your whistle and dial 999. Oh, my God. <laughs> the shops. Haven't you learnt your lesson yet, my girl? I can't walk like a model with him under me feet. I've just seen your father. Is he okay? He's got a nude woman on his cart now. A nude woman? A picture, Billy, a picture. Oh. <laughs> He's a case, isn't he? He's a case, all right. A head case. <laughs> I was speaking to Julie. Did you tell her about the cake? The thing is, she doesn't want a party, ma'am. Oh, why not? It's her baby's christening. It, it, it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing. She wants it quiet and dignified. She doesn't want a fuss. Well, we weren't going to make a fuss. Just the family, that's all. Our family and her family. She hasn't got a family. She's got a mother and a father. Well, her dad's at sea, her mum. Well, her mum's all over the place. They're not like <laughs> us, ma'am. Oh, poor Julie. Poor little doll. And the thing is, I've been putting off telling you this. But the christening isn't at St. Paul's. It's at St. Mary's. St. Mary's? <coughs> but that's a Protestant church! <laughs> it's how she wants it, ma'am. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't see what difference it makes. I mean, a church is a church. God is God. Wash your mouth out, Billy. <laughs> Unless, of course, there are two gods. There's only one God, Billy. I don't know who they pray to. <laughs> oh, come on, ma'am. We all talk to the same fella. Don't you care? Don't you care that your daughter will be brought up one of them? Has everything I've taught you been in vain? Well, the things you've taught me have got nothing to do with religion. You've taught me the difference between good and bad, that's all. And I do both. <laughs> Don't you see? She won't go to confession. She won't go to mass. She won't know the meaning of love and unity and human understanding. Father Dooley will never forgive us. He'll do his holy knot. <laughs> uh, can I have another scone, please, ma'am? <laughs> Greetings. <laughs> Cheers, Jack. Cheers. Joey. Joey Boswell. Drinking on my territory, I see. Well, the beer's better than in ours. Cheers. 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 <coughs> Friend of yours. 
It's me brother, Jack. Jack, Joey's brother, is him? Brother? Yeah. They don't look alike, do they? Sort of opposites, you might say. Yeah. Opposites. We've met, actually. You put stolen candles uh, in my... So, how's business? Not bad, not bad. Expanding, progressing. A little bit of light here, a little bit of dark there. I admire people who attack us. It shows they don't think. Sometimes it pays not to think. Have you got a job? I... He's self-employed. What do you mean he hasn't got a job? He's in antiques. <laughs> we're all in antiques, aren't we, Yizzle? Yeah, all of us. It's just that we're looking for a chauffeur. You know, someone to pilot the roles while Yizzle and I work out the plans. Someone with an innocent look. Simple, even. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, we'll keep an eye out for you. Must be someone, eh? That's what I say, Joey. There must be someone. Someone nice and blameless looking. Yeah, well, I'll see you then. Someone with that right mixture of cheek and fear. Well, there must be dozens of nice blameless looking chauffeurs around. I mean, it's a nice blameless type of job, isn't it? Sometimes. See ya. Yeah. Looks like we'll have to use the other one. What's his name? The one that looks like a bleeding fairy. <laughs> it's a nice coat, that. Do you want to sell it? It's lovely, Mr. Boswell. <laughs> really lovely. Well, she'll soon grow into it. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you called. I don't get on with the rest of your family. Neither do I, love. It's their unity, their clannishness. They stand together in a cluster. You feel locked out. It's the queer one, the missus. She likes to herd them all together into their little safety pens. It's like watching one man and his dog. I don't go over there. I'm not getting caught up in the family trap. I went for tea once. It's all loyal and secret, like the Masons. She's a good woman, they're fine kids, but I'm a free spirit, and she likes to be in charge. Whatever you do, she's there chasing you, snapping at your heels. It's like being married to a border collie. I expect you're wondering why Billy and I aren't married. No, no, you can't marry someone like our Billy. He's not out of his baby bouncer yet. I do love him, but to marry him would be disastrous. You're all right for money? Yeah, fine. I saved some while I was working, and the house is free. And Billy's earning now. Only I make a bit on the side, you know, on yellow mornings. Thanks, anyway. I'm having Francesca christened in a Church of England church. Yeah, I've heard. He doesn't do a lot to please me. God, I mean. But I'm doing it for her. And I want the least fuss. She can choose eventually, priest or vicar. It won't make any difference. They're only human beings. And they're both liars. <laughs> you must do what you want to do. For we pass this way but once. Therefore, any fun, joy, or hilarity you can have, let's have it now. For we will be too knackered to pass this way again. <laughs> what is our Adrian doing? It's on the phone to Carmen. Think they're having up for a row. I don't know why people allow themselves to fall in love. It's fatal. It took me two weeks and Lily Wainwright to find that out. <laughs> yeah, well, some people enjoy the pain and drama of it, though, don't they? You get that from a car crash. Being in love's wonderful. He's a handsome prince then. The shock comes when the magic wears off and you're stuck with a below average neck. Suppose Julie and I are in love, really. It's a bit like death, really, isn't it? Nobody knows what it feels like. They both feel the same. Except that when you're dead, you can sleep through it. <laughs> when Roxy and I... Oh, Roxy. You really did fall for her, didn't you, Joey? Yeah. When she, she I... left you, didn't she? <laughs> Billy, you don't say things like that. People don't just leave people. There are all kinds of complications. In any way, it's all Joey's own personal private life. Apart from which, unless you know the truth, you keep your gob locked. All right. <laughs> well, I do know the truth. I answered the phone one day and Roxy thought I was Joey. <laughs> I'm going, she said. This is it and don't try and find me, Isn't she said. Isn't it funny? I heard it with my own ears. Isn't it funny how in this day of high technology, you have to wait even longer for your change? A man can go to the moon in all weathers, but he still has to wear wellies.
he's on his allotment. <laughs> yeah, look, I'm really sorry, Carmen, but I can't see you tonight. Why, Adrian? This is the third night now. Yeah, I have to think things out. I'm out of work, I've no money, I'm depressed. And I've got a rash. <laughs> All you need is love, Adrian. You're talking about sex again, Carmen. Well, sex then. All you need is sex. And you'll feel better. Well, I might feel better after sex, Carmen, if I felt better enough before sex to be able to do it. <laughs> it's all in the mind, Adrian. Oh, it isn't all in the mind, Carmen, I assure you. It's all over the place. <laughs> Adrian, we've done the pot. We're waiting to say prayers. Look, I'll have to go. I'll call you tomorrow. Well, I'll see you tomorrow night, then. Hey, we'll have the house to ourselves. I'll call you. <laughs> It'll be wonderful. It's always wonderful. Yeah. Bye. Oh, God. <laughs> Don't know how long I can go on being wonderful. Adrian! <laughs> Joe, Adrian, the present for the baby, Joey. It's from all of us. It's a christening cup. Oh, great. Oh, it's great. Real silver. I chose it. It's got a hallmark and it's got a name on it. Look. Francesca. Oh, lucky child, in some respects. <laughs> what's a christening cup? I mean, what's it for? Well, it's a cup, isn't it, to drink out of? She's too young to drink out of it. She won't always be too young, will she? By the time she's old enough, the christening will be over. <laughs> then she can put it in a glass cabinet when she gets married, can't she? She might not get married. Are you suggesting my baby's ugly? <laughs> Somewhere. It's an heirloom, isn't it? Something from the past, something that you hand down to your kids. But we've already established that she might not get married, so she won't have any kids to hand it down to. She might. Have a line, scrub your thoughts. Look, does it matter? We've made the gesture, we've bought her something valuable, something tasteful, something useless. I don't like the picture you've built of my baby's life. She isn't getting married, she isn't going to have any kids, she's not even going to have a glass cabinet. The only thing she will have is a christening cup. And she's going to have to sell that! We'd have been better off getting her that bike. Now look! <laughs> cut it out! All of you! You, sign the card. And you, Billy, give it to Julie after the christening's over. Right, everybody, prayers. We thank the old God. <laughs> we thank the old God for another day. And we ask the Lord to look down on us tomorrow when our beloved baby takes her name. We apologise, O oh Lord, for going over to the other side. <laughs> but it is only temporary. And we ask thee to give us the strength to bear it. Amen. 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 Will there be any food? It's my lunch time. When you get back, Randall. When you get back.
Good afternoon and welcome. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit who gives life to the people of God? We believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. <laughs> we believe and trust in one God. Francesca, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. this light. This is to show that you have passed from darkness to light. <laughs> Almighty God, we thank you for the fellowship in the household of faith with she who has been baptized. Hello? Keep us faithful to our baptism <laughs> and so make us ready for that day when the Hello? whole creation shall be made perfect. I've got it! I've got the job! <laughs> I've always wanted to be a chauffeur. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. <laughs> I'm going to be a chauffeur. with my husband, your father. Could we have a chat indeed? Impudent, presumptuous, contemptuous cow. <laughs> Man, you'll make yourself ill. You said yourself you lie in bed worrying and wondering what to do about it. I do not lie in bed wondering what to do about it. I know what to do about it. Not like some women put up with anything for the sake of peace. Keep me mouth shut for the sake of peace. Wait for everything to blow over for the sake of peace. I know how to solve the problem and get peace. I'll kill the pair of them. <laughs> I'm off now. I'm going to meet our agent. Oh, give us a lift, Jack. I'm going to modelling. Hurry up, then. Come on. Oh, I'll get me things. Perhaps you'll understand me better when we've had a talk. What is there to understand about a tart? <laughs> He's a big pose. Yeah. That is Cam. Yeah, I know. Big pose. Hey, mate. What are you doing? Playing the bloody organ? <laughs> We're not waiting here. One moment. One moment. I'm just checking my account. I'll forget my number in a minute. Many thanks. Oh, God. He's got manners and money. <laughs> Greetings. You know, some of us charge about, and some of us stroll. 
Some of us are patient with our fellow men, and some aren't. And if you beep your horn again, sunshine, I'll put a gob on you like a rubber duck. <laughs> okay. Don't get off my doorstep. I'll kill you. I want to talk. That's all. That's all. That's all. You've done everything else. That's all that's left. Talking. Look, we're both intelligent people. You! Intelligent! <laughs> Any brains you ever had in your head have migrated to your knickers. <laughs> off my step. Go on. I'm warning you. People don't push me around. Well, they do now. You seduced him with your red hair, your red fingernails, and your marauding chest. It wasn't like that. You used to walk up and down this street, past this house, with all your assets on red alert. I did used to live in this street, you know. I had to walk to get to me house. I know, I know. So did you expect me to take up hang gliding? I saw you, I saw what you did. Look, I want to settle down. I want a permanent relationship now. If you don't want Freddy, huh? then... How dare you call him that? It is his name. Familiar cow. <laughs> if you don't want him, then I know I can work at it. But if you do, then I'm also old enough and wise enough to know that I can't win. Uh, for a while, perhaps. But roots go deep. Leaves sprout. I see. So first you take him, and then when he's worn out three years later, you come and ask if I'll take him back. People do that with higher purchase televisions. Not if you'll take him back. If you want him back. For God's sake, don't you understand? No, I don't understand. We come from different planets, Tart. Don't you call me a Tart again. And don't you come near this house again, Tart. <laughs> Look, we're both women. We have handbags <laughs> and ovaries. <laughs> we're as devious and as clever as a gifted monkey. And here we are, fighting over a little man who pushes a yellow cart. Is that how you see him? No. I thought that's how you might see him. <laughs> 
He's a secretive, perceptive, poetic man, a free wandering soul. He brushes the streets because he needs his mind to dream with. He needs both of us now and then. And he wants neither of us permanently. Would you get your Irish elbow out of my cheese flaps, please? <laughs> So, where have you been? Manchester. Oh. Why Manchester? Oh, lots of reasons. It doesn't matter. It does matter. You just disappeared. No word, no letter, no call. You know why I went, Joey. We had a row. Who doesn't? Not one row. Hundreds. It was hello and straight into battle. How's the family? Oh, fine. Great. Fine. Still using up your life, sorting the mouse. Look, it was awkward then. It's three years ago. Me granny died. Grandad was upset. Me dad was leaving. Mam was upset. Billy was doing badly at school, so he was upset. Jack's girlfriend had just left him. Another one upset. Adrian had some kind of nervous rash. Obviously upset. And then there was Aveline. Permanently upset. So the only thing left was for me to go and get upset. I loved you, Roxy. You loved me, Tuesdays and Saturdays. In between come home, Joey, all is not well phone calls. How's your dog, Edgar? He disappeared too. No word, no letter, no call. <laughs> can't cope with the demands of that family. It wasn't that. He was, it was stolen or something. I was joking. I'm sorry. I know you loved that dog. I'm sorry. Have dinner with me? I don't know. Tonight? I can't tonight. Why? I'm doing something. Tomorrow night? Sometime. When? Tonight. Hello. Hello. Joey, I don't think we should start things up again. It's taken me a long time. Hey, guess what day it is? <laughs> what? It's Tuesday. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> um, hello? Listen, ma'am, uh, you mustn't let this uh, thing get to you. She knocked on the door, Joey. I lived in this house with your father. I had all you children in this house. She walked into this house, Joey. Our house. Joey! Look, ma'am, uh, I'll, I'll see you later. When? Uh, later, when, when I've done what I've got to do. Okay. Oh, all right. Seven o'clock? Usual place? Haven't they pulled it down yet? No, I had a preservation order put on it. <laughs> Listen, you better go. My friend will be here soon. Thanks for the lift. Okay. I'll see you.
Hello, ma'am. I'm on my way. Oh, Joey. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's okay, ma'am. It's okay. I'll be there. What are you modelling? Makeup. Someone is going in for a competition. Have you got your whistle? You won't attack me. He makes his own jab. Have you got your whistle? Oh, God. <laughs> I know. I know. You thought it would look good in the yard. <laughs> I persuaded the demolition men to sell it to me. I know you're going to persuade to carry it home for you. Have you felt the weight of those things? It won't go in there. The suspension won't take it. It's ready to snap. Didn't look all that big when I first saw it. Where's it from? Well, those guys brought it out of this empty house. He said they'd been storing it for months for the parks and gardens, but nobody wanted it now. They were going to smash it up. Why didn't you let them? Oh, come on, Jack. It's beautiful. Aging. What happened to your brain, son? I mean, what plan did you have when you decided to take this on? Well, didn't have a plan. I just thought it was beautiful. Oh, it is. It is. Can you think of anybody with a house big enough to put it in? <laughs> well, they're not in Liverpool. There must be lots of people with big houses in London. Oh, well, you did have a plan. Good. You will write home, won't you? <laughs> John! <laughs> Stupid cretin. It was only 50 quid. It's only a bargain, Adrian, if it's delivered to you and you can get it into the house. It's only a bargain if you've got a stately home, three acres of land and a removal van. It's only a bargain if you've got three bouncers to mind it while you go and find someone who's got a stately home, three acres of land and a removal van. What should I do? I'll go and get our Billy. Use his van. You stay here and watch it. Jack! Supposing someone tries to steal it? <laughs> Ignore them. It'll take them a week to shift it. I'll be back before then. Dumbo. Are you all right now? I'm all right, Joey. What did she say? She wants to settle down. She wants to make plans to live permanently with your father. Settle down with me dad? You can't sit still long enough to finish a cup of tea. <laughs> we fought, Joey. In the street. What, you mean handbags and hair pulling the full bear? <laughs> me, Joey. Who's always kept me pride and dignity. Always kept our life in this house secret from the neighbours. Have you ever seen or heard me gossip, Joey? No, ma'am, never. Have you ever heard or seen me reveal anything about anything to that nosy lot out there? No. Well, today I revealed everything. <laughs> <laughs> my anger, my private sorrow, my temper, my marital problems. My knickers! Oh, joy! <laughs> Come on, ma'am. It's nothing. Look, it's just called emotion. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, what will they think of me? What will the neighbours think of me? Who cares what anybody thinks? I mean, you'd soon lose respect for the Queen if she came charging out the palace and beat somebody up in the mouth, wouldn't you? <laughs> it's nothing, ma'am. It's the stuff of life. And nobody was hurt, You so... can't hurt her. You can't get past her chest. <laughs> <laughs> when I think of your father rummaging his way through the clock! <laughs> Don't think about it, then. Hey, come on. I'll make you a cup of coffee. She's got more lipstick on her gob than hot gossip. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I got you, Joey. 
helps me at times like this. <laughs> you kids are the only good things to come out of this marriage. <laughs> oh, and a trip to Brighton once. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Your lips have gone again. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hold it, hold it, hold it. You're on a desert island. The sun is sinking into your whole body. The soft sea breeze is washing over you. And you're wearing your sunproof, rainproof, kissproof, cryproof, touch and glimmer makeup. I'm freezing. No lips, come on. Just inflate your lips. How can I inflate me lips? I'm a human model, not a puffer fish. <laughs> We're flogging makeup, darling. For the next 45 minutes, your face has got to be your fortune. It can go back to boredom and no lips after the session. All right. <laughs> now you look like a retarded guard dog. <laughs> I'm sick of being ordered about by a cheap jack photographer. Oh, cheap jack, is it? Well, the Walton Weekly isn't exactly Vogue, is it? No, darling. And you're not exactly Vogue, either. <laughs> It means the same as Cheap Jack. It means, darling, that you and I haven't got what it takes to be up there with the stars, so we do what we can, don't we? With our tatty studio, our tatty equipment, our tatty magazine, and our tatty face. <laughs> so just give me what we've got, all right? Plus the lips. At least getting married will save you, darling. I'm a permanent resident on the shitty. <laughs> Hello, love. Have a line. <coughs> What's up with her then? She's a woman. That talks up, wouldn't it? <laughs> You're not bringing her in the house. She looks like a Protestant to me. <laughs> oh, I've walked all the way from Wave the Tree looking after her. Look, I've got enough to worry about. I've had Lilo Lil on my doorstep. Our Aveline has come home upset. And now I've got Rambo heading this way with his heart. <laughs> Keep away from me, Freddie Boswell. You'll have to leave her in the van until you sell it. I need the van in the morning. I've got my sandwich round to do. Besides, somebody will pinch it. It takes four men to lift it. Well, somebody could easily arrange that. Yeah, by pinching my van with it in. Well, that's the chance you'll have to take, isn't it? If they do, you'll be 50 quid down, you'll be without wheels, and the hospital will be full of hernia cases. <laughs> it's been a bad day for some of us, oh, Father. I have suffered indignity. Aveline has suffered disappointment, and our Adrian has bought something really stupid. <laughs> and we have at our table someone who has no respect for thy name. <laughs> we do not ask your forgiveness, O oh Father, but that you should punish him in your own perfect way. <laughs> Please make Aveline's eyes better. Amen. 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 You sure you're not having anything, Joey? No. It's OK, Mum. I'm eating with a friend later. What, friend? It's none of your business. Nobody knows anything about him. Where he gets his money from, where he goes, what he does, who he meets. 
Everybody knows everything about me. That's because everything you do is accompanied by your gob. <laughs> and besides, you're not adventurous. Everything you do is either done in this house or Julie's house. Or in the road between this house and Julie's house. <laughs> it's called peeing on your own doorstep. <laughs> yes, well, you'd know everything there is to know about that, wouldn't you? <coughs> Look, I came here because my daughter was upset and I'm staying. So your sarky remarks will have no effect, Nelly Boswell. He said I've got a tatty face. Where is he? I'll burst him. Oh, God, not again. What's the matter with you, Adrian? I'm sorry. It's tension. Carmen hasn't rung. I've still got me rash and I bought something really stupid. <laughs> Look, can't we forget our problems and have a nice family chat? Princess, don't let people get to you. You're beautiful. I've got Julie and the baby to worry about. Now, the thing is, ma'am, Lilo Lil or no Lilo Lil, Dad is sat at this table. That's two extra mouths to feed and two extra bodies to clothe and worry about. And it's fairly obvious that he cares about this family. Ah, oh, Julie's not an easy person to manage. So, let's be kind to him while he's here. Now, Adrian, the thing I want to say to you is, you have bought something really stupid. Nobody else has got a baby to worry about. That's because you're the only one here who can do it. <laughs> We're all infertile, barren, neutered. <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing, Adrian, is aggression will get you nowhere. Get him some multivitamins, Mum, and see you take them, Adrian. That'll solve all your problems. <laughs> and Jack, doesn't she be worrying you today? Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Apart from money, health, sanity, and that great big black hole they call life, the rest's fine. So, that covers all of us. What about you? We haven't covered you. We haven't covered him. Well, I must confess that today I managed to walk around that black hole. It'll get you tomorrow. It might, sunshine. It might. That'll be Carmen. And remember, if you want people to be nice to you, be nice to them. Carmen, my little spring cabbage. It's been three days since I've seen you. And a whole week since we've done anything. Just when you were getting nearly good at it. I brought you some fruit, Grandad. <laughs> Is this your van? Er, uh, no. It's, er, uh, it's... I'll go and get me brothers. They might know whether it's mine or not. <laughs> on your toes, son, on your toes. Grave robberies. We're investigating grave robberies. Something here, Harry. Something's been broken off. She was rather manhandled. By whom? Well, the men I bought her from. There was a tall blonde one and a slightly stooped dark head. On the other hand, I could be wrong about that. <laughs> Wonder what she had on her back then? Wings. What? Oh. <laughs> Wings. Birds have them. Bats and insects have them. Some species of fish and squirrels have them. Angels have them in cemeteries on graves. You're not going to turn up, are you? You're going to disappear, like last time. Hello, yes. Joey, that statue our Adrian Jack and Billy brought home is stolen from a graveyard. The police are here. Well, they'll just have to sort it out, won't they, Mum? Joey? Joey?
What are you reading that for? It's personal. Ah, oh, sex, you mean? Why is it that everybody assumes that everything is to do with sex? Why is it that everybody assumes that if you've got a problem, it's sex? As a matter of fact, yes. <laughs> the thing is, Adrian, sex is nature's trick. It's just bodies. It's fun. It's getting it right and getting it wrong and laughing all the way. I'd like to talk about love rather than just sex, if you don't mind. Oh, yeah. Love. That's different. That's to do with brain damage and terminal <laughs> lunacy <laughs> and sobbing a lot. Yes, well, your experiences have obviously been less ecstatic than mine. Anyway, I can't understand why you're so cynical about everything. I mean, look at last year, all your conquests. It was a good year last year. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine Shardley, Jean Connaught, Lizzie Haycroft. Brenda Macon. You're forgetting Brenda Macon. Brenda Macon? They wouldn't leave you alone. You must have been getting something right. Not like me. Oh, I see. Is it that you're frightened of women? No, women are wonderful. It's calm and I'm frightened of. <laughs> She's a bit of a goer, isn't she? Jean Connett was like that. I used to plan quiet romantic evenings in the back of my van with a bottle of Blue Nun and a box of milk tray. She had me tie undone before I could get the top off the bottle. <laughs> that's it. That's how it is. Oh, God, that's just how it is. All physical. I've been there. I've been there. I don't get a chance to talk, to think, to plan. Two minutes after we meet, she's checking out me erogenous zones. They have a knack, don't they? That's it, that's it. They have a knack. Soulmate. Then it's the kiss and the whisper. Then it's the eyelashes. Oh, God, the eyelashes. Then it's the little wiggle. It's good news, the wiggle. You're nearly there, then. <laughs> The next thing you know... You're banging away like a couple of road drills, yeah, I know. <laughs> I've been there. It's great, isn't it? Where's Jack? It's time to take Mum to the supermarket. He's through there. <clears throat> By the way, I meant to say, I've noticed you're reading that book and I've seen where you've marked the paragraphs. The thing is, I can help you out on that, you see. Sex is a bit like eating jelly babies. What you have to do is... It's through there. <laughs> just ask. Any time. Just ask. How much, love? You've got technology to fuss it makes. Does it take in washing? £94.67, pence, please. Where does she get the money from? That's what I'd like to know. It's her eldest. He's up to all sorts. There's four generations in that family, all screwing the state. No wonder my old man has to pay a lot of tax. Anything over £20, you get a free voucher. The price of food, you should be handing out free pacemakers. <laughs> Did your old man ever tell the taxman about the 200 quid my eldest paid him for the fridge that fell off the back of your old man's lorry? reading that for? I just want to. That's all. There's only one way to have confidence, Adrian. Feel good about yourself. I do feel good about parts of me. <laughs> then put right the bits of yourself that you don't feel good about. Well, I'm too short for a start. So how do I go about that? And I can't put right the other thing up. I just can't. <laughs> We're not talking about sex again, are we? Haven't you got that right yet? I find it very hard, being a man. <laughs> I find being a man very hard. You're too much of a perfectionist. 
See, we've all got to learn about everything. But Leonardo da Vinci drew arms and legs before he painted the Mona Lisa. When you're a boy, you worry about when you're going to do it. When you're a man, you worry about how you're going to do it. And when you've done it, you worry about how everybody else does it. <laughs> do you know what I think? I think it's that girlfriend of yours, Carmen. She talks about it too much. I mean, every time you pick up the phone to her, it's, Oh, yes, Carmen, it was wonderful. Oh, yes, Carmen, it'll be wonderful again tonight. Oh, yes, Carmen, tomorrow night will be wonderful too. Don't let her do that to you, Adrian. I shudder to think what she'll be like when the Earth does finally move for us. And it will, sunshine. It will. Oh, and when it does, leave her. Couldn't do that. Well, why would I do that? Couldn't do that. You'll see. You all right there, Grandad? There's nothing wrong with me. My lunch wouldn't put right. Roxy? Joey, I've told you not to phone me at work. I should never have given you the number. I know, I know, I'm sorry. It's just that uh, I haven't heard from you since the other night. I wondered why, that's all. There's no why. It was a lovely dinner, a lovely time. Then why? Sometimes, Joey, things are too nice. I, I don't know what you mean. How can things be too nice? Too nice for what? Roxy, if there's something wrong, just say. I won't hassle you. I only hassle when things are right. I'll see you at seven. You can pick me up here. All right? Fine. Fine. Bye. Bye. Oh, God. Pull out, son. Pull out before hopelessness sets in. back from the supermarket yet? Not yet, Grandad. I have to sit here and wait, I do. Wait for me breakfast, wait for me lunch, wait for me tea. Maybe you ought to try thinking about something else, Grandad. Steady your stomach. What else is there to think about? Me hands are shaky, me eyes are half blind, me heart is wonky, and me legs are knackered. <laughs> and all my other bits have gone into premature retirement. <laughs> think about love. Grandad. Love? Do you want my brain to go and all? <laughs> I talked about love once and I ended up with your granny. She went up that aisle like a bulldog with a bone in its mouth. <laughs> she never let go until she was drawing her last breath. Yeah, you looked every minute of her. I bet she's up there now, busting God about. Telling him when to make it rain, when to make it shine. Oh, betide him if he leaves the lavatory seat up. <laughs> I'd rather go down with an overdose of fumes than be jerked to death. All right, Grandad. Roast potatoes, cheese pie and broccoli. All right. I don't like broccoli. Roast potatoes and cheese pie. And I'm sick of cheese pie. A lot of roast potatoes, then. <laughs> What is it? What's wrong? She's got a headache. Oh, my God. Now, don't panic, ma'am. Don't panic. Do you want to get into bed, princess? Hey, put the blanket on and the telly. I've got a modelling job. You just forget modelling for now. What's wrong with her? She all right? She's got a temperature. She went out the other day wearing a little pair of white socks. Her knickers and her socks are getting smaller and smaller. <laughs> <laughs> you got any pains, love? Where are they, sweetheart? All over. Take something cold showers to tighten the skin. You can crush all your working parts to death that way. Go and call the doctor, Jack. And Billy, put the fire on the living room. Aren't we supposed to lie her down on her side and cover her with a blanket? 
That's in case of a road accident, Billy. And wipe your mouth. Only I read somewhere. Billy, fire, OK? <laughs> when did it come on, love? I felt a bit funny yesterday. Sort of dizzy. You should have told us, shouldn't you? Oh, you'd have only stopped me going out. I needed some eyelash curlers. OK, come on, come on. We'll put you on the sofa. Come on. You've got to make an appointment. How can you make an appointment when you don't know when you're going to be ill? OK, I'll talk to him. Get him round here, Joey. And tell him that in future we'd like to make an appointment every morning at 10 o'clock just in case one of us takes ill. <laughs> <laughs> that doctor's getting too big for his stethoscope. <laughs> Billy, what are you doing? What? You're taking the cherries off all the cakes. Oh. Put them back in their original holes, Billy. <laughs> yeah. You ought to be in that cot, not her. I'm worried, aren't I? She'll be all right. We all have dizzy spells and headaches. She looked pale. Well, her blood's fighting off the germs, isn't it? It's got to race around her body looking for them, so she'll have less in her face, won't she? And now you tell me there's damp upstairs. You needn't worry about that. I've got to worry, haven't I? It's where Francesca sleeps. She sleeps down here now. It's not right, is it, her sleeping down here? She should have a proper bedroom, a private place. You mean like in your house? If you want a bed to yourself, you've got to book in advance. We all have a bed to ourselves, Julie, every one of us. They're all in the same room, that's the problem. <laughs> anyway, Aveline's got her own room and Francesca's going to have hers. I don't like you looking at me like that, Julie. What have you done? I've got a job. Julie! Before you start telling me that in the great arena of life a woman's place is sweeping up the sawdust, that if I don't stay at home with our child, she'll turn into a retarded hermit. I wasn't going to say that. Yes, you were, Billy. When I stopped breastfeeding her, you said her legs wouldn't grow to the full length. <laughs> when I gave her a dummy, you said it would make her deaf. You keep bringing out this long list of things you've read somewhere. Listen, Julie, I'm a man and you're a woman. I think you are equal to me. I'd curtsy to you, Billy, but my chastity belt's too tight. <laughs> well, I have modern thoughts and, and a modern outlook. And I won't have you saying I'm anything else, Julie. I'm a man of today, Julie. I don't want you working and you're not going to work. Next you're going to say, my mam doesn't work. No, I'm not. And she doesn't, does she? No, Billy. She doesn't work. Your mam. She does the cooking, does the cleaning, does the ironing, does the washing, does the everything. I'm talking about real work. You all sit around that table like the last supper. She comes up with something every breakfast, every lunch, every tea, every dinner. And next door, she's got your granddad. The snapping turtle. <laughs> I don't like you criticising my granddad, Julie. I think about your mam every time I watch those wildlife programmes about the little wren feeding the big cuckoo. <laughs> Sitting there with its gob eternally open while she rushes about wearing the feathers off her arse. <laughs> <laughs> my mam, Julie, is happy. She loves her family. She loves cooking and cleaning for us. Then go and live there permanently, Billy. Go back to the womb. You never left it, anyway. But I love you, Julie. All right, Princess. Is me lipstick all right? You look fantastic. <laughs> Comb your hair, Freddie Boswell. My hair is Sagittarian hair. It does its own thing. <laughs> Don't put the siren on, love. She's got a headache. We'll see you there, OK? Have you ever done gardening? Not seriously. I've tampered with my granddad's window box. I was looking for someone professional, really. As you can see, it's uh, quite complicated. And you're not very strong looking, are you? I'm very fit, actually. When Christmas comes, I'm the one who has to go to Delamere Forest to pinch the Christmas tree. I'm very trustworthy, very honest. Except at Christmas. <sighs> I expect you'll do. The mower is electricity powered, and uh, I can always help you sort out the orchids from the weeds. They don't look as though they've done very much. <laughs> I'm from real estate. I see. That would explain it. Why do you want to be a gardener? Uh, well, I saw the advert about an hour ago. 
I like the open air, the colours, the smells. I like beautiful things. There are some jobs inside the house, too. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. Hmm. Kitchen shelves, dining room shutters, bedroom doors. I don't think you'll be disappointed. I'm sure I won't. I don't like our Avaline sleeping in other people's sheets. <laughs> it's all very clean, Mum. It's a hospital. They disinfect everything. All the same, there's nothing like your own sheets. At least you know no one's died in them. <laughs> We've been here three hours now. Three hours! I'll bet people get better waiting to be seen in this place. <laughs> Do you remember when she was born? Of course I remember when she was born. <laughs> Royal Infirmary, Ward C, little pink bundle, blonde hair. She wasn't pink, she was brown and she had black hair. The pink baby was in the next cot, only you wouldn't know because you were pissed. <laughs> I'm not the only man who got pissed when he became a father. You got pissed when you became a husband. <laughs> I'm not pissed now, am I? You can't forgive, can you, eh? You can't forgive. Any moment now, it'll be Lilo Lil again. Don't you dare mention the name in this hospital where my daughter is ill. I'll go and get her some coffee. Keep her gob occupied. <laughs> OK, ma'am, one thing at a time now. Mrs Boswell? How is she, Doctor? She's still running a temperature, so we'll keep her in for observation. We've given her some medication and we'll carry out some tests tomorrow. All right? Have you any idea what might have caused it, Doctor? Uh, we won't know, I'm afraid, until after the tests. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Yes? Thank you. <laughs> the patient, Aveline Boswell, is my sister, his sister, her daughter. So we are rather interested parties. Would you like a word with the ward, sister? No, thanks. You'll do. If you can keep still long enough. Now, I know that the majority of people you get in here are not very knowledgeable about their anatomy and that they surrender themselves to your obvious superiority. But we are different. We happen to know our arse from our elbow. <laughs> and my brother here could give the kiss of life to a swordfish. So what we'd like to know is... OK, Jack. Watch Mum now. Greetings. <laughs> Please forgive my brother. He's feeling a bit over-emotional. However, to continue his concern, we would like to ask certain questions and point out certain requests. How high is her temperature? What test will you be giving her? What in particular will you be looking for? How long will they take? What kind of medication is she receiving? Can we be certain that all needles are absolutely sterile? If you should require blood, would you bear in mind we have enough in our house to save the world? <laughs> are the eggs free range? <laughs> and when finally you come to your conclusions, could we have a second opinion, please? <laughs> Thank you. thing is, I'm no good at it. Mm, and who's been telling you that? Nobody. I just know. A man knows these things. You're so pretty. Have you any brothers and sisters? I have a sister. Three brothers. A mum and a dad and a granddad. And a dog. Yes. You can relax now. I'm not going to kiss you again. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. It was my birthday yesterday. Oh, many happy returns. <laughs> There won't be that many, I'm afraid. I'm what they call middle-aged now. I experienced a curious kind of panic. Will anyone ever fancy me again? 
For a strange breed, the middle-aged, a mixture of green and yellow grass. If you kiss us, we slap your face. If you don't kiss us, we kiss you. Then we slap your face. <laughs> it's a ritual we go through. You didn't slap mine. No. I couldn't quite decide whether anyone was actually there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think I'll wait for someone more experienced to do my gardening. I hope you can find someone who can do the job. It's very physical. Gardening. <laughs> right. Uh, when you leave, close the gate, won't you? I will. Yeah. And I hope you... we overcome our little problem. Oh, uh, that. Yeah. I was lying, actually. <laughs> we all play our little games, don't we? Um, I'm a bit of a tiger, actually. A bit of a tiger? <laughs> the whole tiger. I'm the whole tiger, actually. Oh. Good. At least, that's what they tell me. When you finish your additive-free biscuits and your ale grey tea, see what your belly has to say about that. <laughs> you say there's an improvement? Oh, good. The temperature's down. The test will be through in a couple of days. Thank you, sister. Goodbye. Let us pray. We thank thee, Father, for the good news. And please make Avaline's tests. Is it negative or positive, Joy? I get mixed up. Negative will do, ma'am. Negative, Father. And bring her home soon, safe and well. Amen. 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 You can have your dinner, aren't you, love? Yeah. Where are you going? Billy, Joey does not like to discuss his private affairs. Not like some. It's all right. I'm not going to argue. She'll get tired eventually. <laughs> Where's our Adrian? With Carmen. He prefers sex to food. <laughs> hey, remember, remember the days of preferring sex to food? Yeah, thin and happy we were. Why couldn't you have done both? Because unlike you, our girlfriends didn't have a house. I had to make do with the railway embankment. <laughs> remember all the coal he used to bring home, Dad? He used to stack it behind the railway station. Yeah, yeah I'd <laughs> do. You know, if we knew then what we know now, we'd have gone electric. <laughs> I used to stagger home after a passionate experience with a sack of coal on me back. <laughs> you don't have any luck, do you? I mean, what with railway embankments and no dinner? I mean, soon you'd be too old to do anything, and you can't do much with the little time you've got left because of AIDS. I'm lucky I've got Julie. I wouldn't look so smug, Sunshine. Seeing as Jack and I are going to be denied the pleasures of procreation, it's up to you now to make sure the world doesn't run out of Boswells. OK. I'll see you, Mum. I'll pop in and see I'll have a line on me way. All right, love. Tell her we'll see her later. Our agent was telling me about this woman. She lives in this big house up by Croxteth Road. She advertised for a gardener and he applied for the job. He'd only been there two minutes when she tried to seduce him in the greenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Our Adrian. He looked as pure and fragile as a raindrop. The tart. I know the lady. I swept their drive for her once. Once. I bet. 
She's like one of them spiders that makes a web and drops it on the insects as they pass by underneath it. Well, she wouldn't have any trouble hauling you in, would she? She could do it with a hairnet. <laughs> Look at that. She serves me pudding as if it was a hand grenade. I've been thinking. Oh, God. He's going to say something so profound, all the great poets will turn in the graves. No. Why didn't you have your dinner first and then go to the railway embankment? Or go to the railway embankment first and then have your dinner? I told you. Can you hear all the gravestones toppling? <laughs> That was wonderful, Adrian. Yeah, it was. I told you, didn't I? I told you it would be. Yeah, you did. Oh, this is our lucky place, this. Yeah, it is. Adrian? Adrian? Where are you going? Adrian? Because I'm married. That's why. Are you awake? Yeah. I did it. <laughs> I did what you said. I walked away. I left her, like you said. I did it. You're always right, Joey. Yes? I believe you want some gardening done. <laughs> gotta get up, gotta get out. Gotta. Grab the world by the throat and shout. Buy it. Sell it. The game's getting out. Cause someone's stealing you a losing card. Right now. 